Hello everyone. In this video, I want to show you some uh, nice features of Simulink, some more advanced features. So if you watch my previous videos and uh, about Simulink and using it to, let's say, uh, simulate the projectile motion, you see that I could show the projectile motion with air drag. And uh, here, that's the same thing. I have this MATLAB user defined function, which has um, equations for air drag and uh, here not only I have air drag I want to uh, be able to simulate successive bouncing on the ball of the ball on the ground I know MATLAB has an example that it shows a ball that is under free fall so the ball falls down and then bounces back and back and back until it loses all of the energy so here, this is an extension of that example where it's a projectile, okay? So it's not just free fall. There is X and Y motion, you can see. I double integrated X and double integrated Y. Y. And I want to show you a few extra advanced features. So first thing is this block here called a second order integrator. So uh, as opposed to the simple integrator, which only integrates a signal one time and you need one initial condition for which the initial condition could be internal or external, right? This one has um, uh, two integrations in it. And if you go and look at it, it can provide initial condition for X. You can provide initial condition for X dot. And you can make that condition to be what? Either internal or external, okay? Not only that, under attributes, you can say, for instance, reinitialize X dot when X reaches the saturations. And here under X, you see it has it says limit X. If you check that, then you can put limits on X. So X cannot go be more than so much from upper or lower limit. So if you uh, watch the other video that I have, so you can watch this one under my playlist dynamics is projectile rebounded with explosion sound effect. And you see the way that I forced the simulation to stop after the projectile hits the ground is I compare the Y to zero. And when it goes less than zero, I use the stop uh, block to stop the simulation. And in order for me to uh, show this uh, ball rebouncing over and over and over, I use a MATLAB M file, and in this MATLAB M file, as you can see, I use a while loop. And uh, in the while loop, I update my initial condition. You see, this is the Y dot. I update it using the coefficient of restitution E. And as long as this Y dot is more than something, I keep repeating the, uh, uh, basically, the while loop. So here, I want to avoid using MATLAB altogether and just use it all in Simulink. And instead of two separate integrals, as I said, I use a, a double integrator, right? And I instead of stopping when y becomes negative, instead of the stop block and a logical comparator, I do it inside the second integrator. So if you go and look, my initial x is 0 here. My initial x dot is 200 cosine, 45, uh, cosine of 45, because 45 is the launch angle and 200 is the launch velocity. Now I have no limitation on x dot or x in this case, okay? And I don't want to reinitialize anything, but if you look at y, the initial y is 1.5, the upper limit on y, there is no limit, but the lower limit is zero. That is forcing something in the attribute. So here I say y cannot be less than zero. I'm putting a threshold here. Now, what does it do? Instead of stopping the simulation under attributes, it allows me to reinitialize x dot, in this case, y dot, when y reaches the saturation. So as soon as the y hits the ground and becomes negative, it allows me to reinitialize my y dot. Now, how do you want to reinitialize it? Here, you see initial condition. Instead of making it internal, I make it what? external so um, I can get my y dot right before impact multiplied by coefficient of restitution and get the new one now how do I do that part so when I add that external it gives me this x here okay and uh, I can connect the signal to now how do I get the y dot right before impact right before y becomes zero and update it 
So I use a memory block. Memory always gives you the last value of the signal. So right when that condition is about to restart, I get the Y right before impact through the memory block, the last Y, multiplied by negative E, negative coefficient of restitution here, okay? And then what? I pass it back to the integrator. Now here, I also need to use this block called IC, or initial condition block, which says initially the Y dot is 200 times what? Sine of 45. Because if you don't do that, guess what? How much is your initial Y dot? This is the update. This part is to update it each time after impact. But how, would, how much do you start with? You see here, you know how much your X dot is to begin with, and you don't need to update it. But if you don't use this IC block, which gives it some initial value, and then after that, you see this wire going through it, means initially it's this number, but after that, instead of giving this number again to it and again and again, it allows the value of the signal to pass through it and get basically become in charge, right? So after the uh, setting the initial value, the future values are coming from this what? Coming from this uh, signal here, okay? So this block is called IC block or initial condition, okay? And this is a powerful block. So the blocks I showed you so far is a second integrator, which has limits and it can have resets and this IC block as well as the memory block. And I want to show you a couple of other interesting things. For instance, if somebody says, how much is the total flight time? How much is the projectile is going to be up in the air? So you can use a clock block and use a display and it keeps updating until what uh, the time stops so it shows you the final simulation time you can have a look at x and if you want to see the range of the projectile the total after all the bounces you can connect x to a display now one of my students asked me this uh, great question she said if you want to know what was the maximum height that the projectile ever reached how would you do that? Well, for that, you cannot use a simple display and connect it to Y because this Y constantly going up and down and changing. So if you want to record, if you want to record the maximum Y value ever reached by your um, Y, you have to do a running maximum, okay? How do you do that? Here, you send the Y to a max block and then you get the value of the previous value of y using a memory and then compare the current one against the previous one and then the max of them will be shown on this display so as the signal goes on this is like a filter like a running max filter through the signal okay it always keeps the maximum of the current and the previous one so if the previous one was not the max, but the one before that was the max, this guy is going to keep it. You see, so by comparing the current and the previous value of the signal and getting the maximum out, you can look at the maximum value possible in the entire range of the signal. Let me run this for you. Okay, so you see that the run time is, flight time is about 100. Now, of course, it doesn't mean really it's 100 because after some time the ball barely moves, the total X traveled is uh, 1200 and the maximum height is 304, 304. Look at the XY graph, that's interesting. There we go. So first of all, you see the bouncing ball clearly. You see it, it is bouncing so many times, so many times until literally basically not doing anything. If you look at the maximum height, clearly you see 304 or more than 300. And if you look at the maximum X here, it's about uh, 12, what? Uh, uh, 1201 or something. Now, here, this rest of it, this portion of it, is literally, there is not so much motion. So maybe after Y dot becomes less than something, maybe you really want to limit it. Okay? Yeah? So uh, maybe you want to put some block on Y dot, and as soon as magnitude of Y dot is less than something, 
you might want to what you might want to uh, drop the whole thing you can do that but here clearly you could see that the uh, y the maximum y here is absolutely meaningful okay here i have added that for you so this initial condition this uh, y dots after impact i get a feedback from it i look at the absolute value of it and as long as this absolute value it goes less than uh, 0 0.001 or one millimeters per second that means it's barely bouncing back then i'm gonna watch then i'm gonna stop the simulation so you see the simulation does not go all the way to 100 seconds it only stops at 48.9 seconds the range is 98 uh, 989 and the maximum height is still the same 304 okay so it can literally determine the stop of the simulation when the bouncing velocity is you see less than uh one millimeter per second you can practically call it what here no bouncing anymore okay so this is a, a an advanced i would call um simulation of bouncing ball with a lot of extra new things hopefully it was useful to you i'll see you in the next video thank you